Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you this evening to our Good Friday worship service. It is a good Friday. Our Lord is good and sent our Savior to die on the cross for our salvation. And it is good for us to remember that sacrifice that Jesus has made and how he finished the work of redemption upon the cross. And I am grateful to those who are able to be with us. I welcome you all, welcome visitors who are here this evening. It's um, a, a privilege to be able to worship the Lord with you and to have you here. Those who may be Zooming in this evening, grateful to have you with us here as well. This is a very special service. We call this a tenebrae service. Tenebrae means darkness. And it is a dark and quiet and somber service centered around uh, several Bible readings. It's almost all readings and uh, music where we reflect upon the reading of Scripture. And as we go through these readings, we will be walking through those events leading up to the death of our Savior on the cross. We will celebrate uh, this commemoration this evening, and we will gather as God's people on Easter Sunday. This Sunday, our worship service begins at 10 a.m., and you are all invited to come and to be a part of that service as well. Because it is a quiet service, I do encourage you uh, to double check to make sure that your cell phones are silent. You'll be glad that you did. Um, because the service ends in silence. Um, it has an incomplete feel to it. It's not a complete worship service. We kind of are left hanging at the end of the worship service. And we... Uh, what, what we will do after the time of darkness and the lights are extinguished and removed from the sanctuary, we will close the service with the Lord's Prayer, but no, no benediction, no closing singing, just silence. And you are invited to keep silence then at the conclusion of our worship today. We will... Um, uh, we will... Uh, Recline the cross, and you will be invited to come up. It's our tradition that you can come up and take a nail and a hammer and nail a nail into the cross before you leave. Feel free to remain seated in the sanctuary for as long as you wish. Come up when you wish, uh, and you may nail, remembering that we nail our sins to the cross, and at the cross they are forgiven. So I encourage you to take part in that. And whether you come forward to nail a cross uh, on the cross or if you're just leaving, if we could leave in silence, please. And so now we draw near to the Lord to, to set aside the cares of the day, to attend to the holy work that God has done for us in Jesus and on the cross. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we come into this place from various activities. We enter into this sanctuary carrying various burdens. You know our cares. You know our pains. Um, Lord, we come to be with you and to think upon your great, amazing, saving, redeeming love that you have shown for us in Jesus. So as we begin this service with a piano meditation and as we go through the readings, Lord, turn our hearts again and again to see you and to meet with you and to receive blessings from your hand as we worship together. Be glorified, be glorified, great God, in this time of worship that we have. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
I invite you to stand with me. And will you join with me in the litany from Scripture by responding in the bold passages? Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way.
Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you could not watch with me one hour. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit within is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. <clears throat> Again, for the second time, he went away and I'm sorry. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep, and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going and see my betrayer is here. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you came to do. Then he came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And before one of those who were with Jesus, and behold, one of those who was with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back in its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send more than 12 legions of angels? And how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching you, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled.
Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. And Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus, that they might put him to death. But they found none though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, this man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood and said, have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you from now on you will see the Son of Man seated on the right hand of the power of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witness do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, he deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and the servant girl came up to him and said, you also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them, before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And then he went out to the entrance, and another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth. and again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, you too are one of them for your accent betrays you. And then he began to invoke curse, a curse upon himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly.
Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, what accusation do you have against this man? They answered him, if this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, it is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this of your own accord or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber.
Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing, bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and the purple robe. Jesus, Pilate said to them, Behold the man. <clears throat> when the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has made himself son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to Jesus, to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered, them, delivered him over to them to be crucified.
So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place that they called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home.
one of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things.
since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled, not one of his bones will be broken. And again another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrhs, myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.